What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope life is treating you well. And it is a glorious fall day here in the Northeast. Got the colors, it's a little bit drizzly out. My kind of weather. But today, I wanna to talk to you guys about electric dirt bikes. And when I said that, most of you guys probably thought of the Suron. It is the most popular bike in that category and the, the electric dirt bike space in my view is a little bit misunderstood and i apologize if the lens gets a little bit covered in water but whenever you talk about the suron there's always a bunch of people that say it's a huge waste of money you should just get a full-on electric motorcycle if you want something like that and i completely understand uh, what those people are getting at the point that they're trying to make but the way that I see it, electric dirt bikes are just extremely versatile machines. They're small enough that you can get away with riding them as an e-bike if you go slow. They're semi-cheap, at least when compared to electric motorcycles. They have great suspension, so they're super comfortable on long rides. And speaking of long rides, they have immense batteries. It is almost, if not impossible, to find uh, an e-bike that has over 2,000 watt hours of battery capacity, which the Suron has. And I have some exciting news for you guys. There is a new player in the electric dirt bike space. And to me, it fixes the number one, let's call it shortcoming of the Suron. And this is actually the entire reason why I don't have a Suron. It's because for the price, you know, 4000 5000 with taxes and shipping, I really think the Suron should be 72 volts. It's kind of inexcusable that it's not, but that's where this bike comes into play. It's entering the market as a 72 volt alternative, and thus it has a distinct competitive advantage over the existing Suron. And I gotta say, I am super jazzed about this bike, and I totally want one. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about this bike is that there's two versions, 60 volts and 72 volts. In this video, we're gonna primarily focus on the 72 volt version because I think it's the most compelling bike out of the two, and it's only 500 more additional dollars. And by the way, E-Straps isn't the only company that sells this bike. I found the same exact bike called the Mantis from this company. And that's pretty common, even with the Suron, Segway sells the same exact bike. But taking a deeper dive into the actual specifications here, this uses a PMSM electric motor. And comparing this to the segment benchmark, which is the Suron, that uses the same exact motor type. And supposedly this motor type gives you a better and smoother torque with better efficiency and less noise than a brushless DC motor. They're saying you should get a top speed of 52 miles per hour with a torque of 459 newton meters. That is extremely impressive. The Storm Shock also runs a bit more power through that motor at a peak of 8,000 watts. And the Suron has a peak of 6,000 watts of power. Now moving on to the battery, this to me is one of the greatest selling points of this bike considering the price point. So it's 72 volts, 38.8 amp hours. So that huge battery is gonna give you 80 miles of range in eco mode and 40 to 60 in a more high powered mode. Now the Suron also has a solid battery capacity. It's only 60 volts, but they give you an option between 34 and 38 amp hours. Now, if we just take a look at the bike itself, we can see that the design is extremely similar to that of the Suron. The battery, the controller, the motor placement, even the aluminum frame is extremely similar. So just like with the Suron, the battery is easily swappable and it has a cover that kind of locks it in place. There's a breaker switch and the motor and battery is actually IPX7 waterproof. Now, one of my favorite things about the Suron is how small, nimble, and lightweight it is. And for the Storm Shock, it comes in at 122 pounds without the battery and 150 with the battery. So that's similar to the Suron, but it is like 30 pounds more 
And if I had to guess, it's because the motor and the battery are both a little bit bigger. As far as I can tell, the StormShock uses the same exact front suspension fork from either KKE or DNM, but the rear geometry and pivot point is radically different. If you take a close look at the images here, the rear shock directly mounts to the swing arm, and the Suron uses a linkage in the back. Now this could potentially cause problems because it adds more moving parts, and I've seen reports of people breaking and bending this rear linkage, but the point of it is to give you leverage and thus better rear suspension. So because of that, I'm gonna say that the Suron probably has slightly better rear suspension although the front is exactly the same. Okay, so to summarize, here are the main specifications. The StormShock, 8,000 watts, 72 volts, 38 amp hours, total capacity of over 2,700 watt hours, and it's $4,700. Oh yeah, and I did forget to mention that the StormShock, you can actually order it with turn signals, and you cannot do that, unfortunately, with the Suron. So there you have it, guys. That is the brand new StormShock slash mantis what do you think leave a comment i'm super jazzed i might be a little bit biased i like 72 volt bikes and i like the suron and this just seems like the perfect solution now of course you could always convert a suron to 72 volts you have to buy a new battery a new controller and luckily the suron is popular enough that there's a rich aftermarket that allows you to do upgrades like this but it's gonna cost you like eight or nine thousand dollars to to buy all of those parts when here you can get it 72 volts straight out of the box for forty seven hundred dollars i think it's a game changer let me know what you think and i'll see you guys in the next one